It's the middle of the summer that never was thanks to the coronavirus. The sky is orange with fire and flames from California to Nebraska. And the only new thing on TV is a two week long infomercial about politics. Welcome to Politics for People with me, Jimmy Fremgen. I've spent the bulk of my career in classrooms and capitals teaching and practicing how government works. I started my career as a history and government teacher before working in politics at the state and national levels. In most election years, I get asked by my friends how to vote or what certain things and current events mean. In this series, I'm going to break down some of the topical national and local political issues for you to make them easier to understand for everyday people that haven't spent their lives eating, drinking, and sleeping politics, which is not recommended. So, hopefully by the end of the series, you'll have a better idea of how your decisions and how your influence directly affects how your government makes the laws that affect you. So, that brings us to today and political conventions. Why do they exist? Well, the short reason is because they are the formal nominating process for political parties to determine which public officials and policy ideas they're going to support over a specific time period. Even though the ones that we are most familiar with are national conventions, they can and do happen at the state and local level as well. When enough votes are cast at the convention to support a specific candidate, these are called endorsements, and they're one of the main functions of the convention. Endorsements constitute a formal action taken by the party, and though they're not required, they're really handy for candidates because they come with political and fundraising support. Political parties are not the only ones that issue endorsements. A political candidate can seek endorsement from a variety of people and groups, like newspapers, community leaders, or by the local chapter of Americans for Better Breading on Bar Snacks, otherwise known as ABS. Because why work out when you can have ABS? Generally speaking, though, political parties are the ones that hold conventions. It's also helpful to nominate a candidate instead of endorsing a candidate at these national conventions because they're happening after the primaries, whereas normally they happen before. Which means that when you go to a national political convention, everybody already knows who's probably going to be the candidate for president. Conventions also take stances on po political issues. This is called establishing the party platform. It's a process as literal as it sounds. Delegates from a committee get together and debate former, formal policy stances on issues. Each of these individual issues is called a plank in the platform. An example of an issue that was discussed last week at the Democratic Convention, and which would have likely been discussed if the Republican Party had chosen to have a platform committee, would have been the issue of health care. This year, as part of a 91-page document, Democrats laid out their plan to pursue a universal system of health care for every American by creating a high-quality public health plan that would compete with the private sector companies in a fair and open market. Republicans, on the other hand, have responded by passing a resolution in advance of their 2020 convention that says, quote, The RNC enthusiastically supports President Trump and continues to reject the policy positions of the Obama-Biden administration, as well as those espoused by the Democratic National Committee today. Therefore, be it resolved that the 2020 Republican National Convention will adjourn without adopting a new platform until the 2024 Republican National Convention. What they're saying with this statement is that basically the formal stance of the Republican Party in 2020 is that they hated Obama and Biden so much that they don't need to evolve or change on any of their political issues until 2024. So who are these conventions for? Well, if you lean towards a party traditionally, but are undecided so far in this election, congrats! This shindig was built for you. Let's say that you voted for Mitt Romney against Obama, but haven't decided who you're voting for this year. If you watched the Democratic National Convention last week, you got four nights of programming designed just for you to help you decide to vote for Joe Biden. That's why we got less time focused on rising stars in the Democratic Party like New York Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, and more time for Republican falling stars like Ohio Governor, former Ohio Governor, John Kasich. If you're the kind of person that gets energized by AOC, 
you are almost definitely not a swing voter. But if you recognize John Kasich as the moderate and responsible counter candidate to President Trump, who you almost voted for in 2016, you'll probably be more likely to hear him out from this gravel road his grandchildren left him on after he complained too many times about playing WAP in the car. Traditionally, conventions are for the undecideds, but they are also for the delegates. This can be anyone, from political operatives to diehards in the party, to elected officials like members of Congress, state senators, council members, and mayors. These are some of the people that in non-pandemic years get mercilessly skewered by The Daily Show and late night TV hosts. It's easy to do because these people are so committed and have committed their identity to the party so extensively, both personally and professionally, that they're gonna stick to the script no matter what. Uh, this isn't a bad thing for the parties and for the conventions. The political parties want these kinds of supporters to show up. This is why you see blatant fan service worked in like speeches from celebrities or musical performances, artists that identify with that brand of politics. Now, you are never going to convince a 76-year-old swing voter from Wisconsin that they should vote for Joe Biden instead of Donald Trump by abandoning Maggie Rogers on a cliff on the Pacific Ocean. But you might make his 21-year-old granddaughter feel a lot better about phone banking for Uncle Joe instead of getting to go to outside lands this year. The RNC, as the cool kids call it, if there are cool kids in national politics, will also have surprise guests that'll be designed to cheer on the Republican base, but the party has been tight-lipped about who that's going to be, probably because coronavirus makes everything harder than it should be. We're just gonna have to wait and see if Kid Rock is gonna make an appearance this year and most importantly, we're going to have to wait to see that if he does show up, whether President Trump is going to be this excited again. So why do conventions matter? In short, they don't, usually. In the old days, when conventions ran in person, they would have speaking programs that lasted for days straight. And it was normal for political reporters to literally talk over the presenters and speakers of the convention. But unlike state conventions and even political conventions overseas and other democracies around the world, national political conventions only happen once every four years during a presidential cycle, and they're usually newsworthy. Sometimes they're newsworthy for good reasons, sometimes not so much. In 1968, Democrats held a convention in one of the most politically charged environments in American history. The middle of the Vietnam War and the year that both Dr. Martin Luther King and Robert Kennedy were assassinated. In Chicago that year, during their convention, Democrats, some Democrats, refused to seat black and Latino delegates on the convention floor. Outside of the building, it wasn't much better. Authoritarian Mayor Richard J. Daley sent in the Chicago Police Department to conduct mass arrests in advance of the convention in black neighborhoods. He also responded to anti-war protests with crushing force amid claims from anti-war protesters that they were going to send super hot hippie girls to seduce the delegates and give them LSD. Democrats have since learned from this mistake and now maintain maximum social distancing from hippies. Conventions are usually more noted for the speeches. In 1988, then Governor Bill Clinton spoke for so long that he was cheered when he said, in conclusion, in closing. Candidates can also define themselves by one statement, like how FDR announced his plan for a sweeping nation-saving public works plan called the New Deal, and how George Bush Sr. famously said, Read my lips. No new taxes. If nothing else, Political conventions are an opportunity to hear what a national political party wants to tell you about itself in the most controlled environment possible. Unlike a national news cycle, where politicians have to compete for coverage, this is a completely produced, neat and tidy package that argues why they should get to lead the country for the next four years. 
It's like a first date. They're breaking out their best outfits, their best manners, really doing their makeup, really making sure the hair is just right. But it's the last chance that they're going to get of a perfectly controlled message. From here on out, you're only going to learn more about them, that they snore, and that they don't replace the toilet paper properly. Say it with me. Only serial killers put the toilet paper back underhand. For political parties, it's more like they take their clothes off for the first time to discover that they have a birthmark on their back that admits that they haven't won a presidency with the popular vote since 1988. Or that their chest hair has a message shaved into it that admits that the Green New Deal is a non-binding resolution with absolutely no force of law. As candidates and delegates go out from the conventions this year, the starting gun for the general election has officially gone off. We'll be moving towards November 3rd and making a lot of big choices about who's going to be in the White House next year. If you like this video, please like it by clicking the thumbs up button below and then go next to that and click the subscribe button too. If you have any questions or topics you want me to break down, leave them in the comments. I'm literally not doing anything else. I can't even go outside right now. Other than that, this has been the first ever episode of Politics for People with me, Jimmy Franklin.